You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. As Illinois transitions into a cleaner energy future laid out in the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, there are some questions on how they are going to fill energy needs during that transition period. Joining us now is a representative who thinks he has an idea for helping with that. It's Representative Mark Walker from Arlington Heights. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You have a bill that it will end the moratorium on nuclear power, on building nuclear power plants in the state. Uh, this was a big discussion in the in all of the buildup around the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, the, that sort of transitional energy sources as we see those, you know, coal plants, natural gas plants just close naturally uh, in their in coming to the end of their own lifespans. But why is this the way to go when we have others in the Capitol who are saying we just need to ramp up uh, production and ramp up construction on wind and solar projects? It's really simple when you think about it. And it's over simple. Um, when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, which is a significant portion of our day, what do we do for a baseline of energy, a base load? Um, people are saying in the future we're going to have batteries that are much better for storage. I think in the transition period, we absolutely need a baseline of energy for the periods when the sun isn't shining, the wind isn't blowing, and that's nuclear. Uh, we're already the leader in nuclear in the country. We have 50 years experience with it. We know what we're doing, it is carbon free. And so I, I think it's absolutely critical for us to meet our goals. When you're pushing an idea like this, do you know of companies that are ready to go, ready to build these facilities now if this moratorium is lifted? Or is this a welcoming them back? What, what, how ready or how quickly could these be built? It's all, it all depends on what we're talking about. For major nuclear plants, the technology, there's new technology that has less waste, is more efficient, is cheaper, that people are willing, ready to go with. For these small modular nuclears or micronuclear, where you can put them in to run a data center or something like that, that's probably five, six years away. But we are building them and researching them at the University of Illinois. Yeah. There are some environmental groups that, you know, don't love this legislation strictly because if you if you lift the moratorium now, you know, it could, we could see a proliferation in this kind of stuff, whereas people want to see that wind and solar energy in that area. I mean, does the bill have any sort of uh, regulation on exactly how many can pop up or does that fall into the ICC and the other, other state No, agents? you're exactly right. The bill simply opens the door for proposals to see where we want to go. There are all kinds, of, <clears throat> all kinds of areas we could expand into. I don't expect the growth to be strong. I don't expect this bill to focus on any kind of nuclear or any location for nuclear. But one of the complaints is it's going to take away investments in infrastructure. Well, for instance, if we say, OK, we're just going to improve or reopen a current nuclear plant, they already have the infrastructure there. There's no additional electronic infrastructure, electric infrastructure. Was this an oversight by the state, by, by lawmakers to not have something like this in this bridge period as, with the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act as we're starting to transition to these cleaner sources of energy? Was this a problem that they didn't include a transitional form of energy to get us there? They discussed it in depth, and I'm a great fan of the, I was a great supporter of CGEN, I'm a great fan of the, the groups working on it, um, but they were gambling on storage. In fact, a couple of years ago, the big thing was, well, Elon Musk will come up with a battery. Well, okay, that's great. Um, let's have a more sure thing than that. <laughs> because without storage, you need a baseline of, of energy to produce, to keep our businesses and homes going, and it can't be, in best case, coal. There, when did you realize that this would be, that you felt like this was a necessary step? Was it this summer when utility bills started skyrocketing for people <laughs> across the state? Was it, you know, before when we started to get those warnings from the regional operator, the MISO grid? When, when did you realize that, okay, we need to step in here? Those are really good points, but I realized it before that. Oh, so you're it the was, prophet in this yeah. case. Well, not really. 
Um, there was a lot of discussion, but a, a significant portion of our community is simply afraid of nuclear. And they're especially afraid of what we do with waste. When I figured out that how we handle waste now is, is safe and probably sufficient for the foreseeable future, I got much more comfortable with pushing nuclear as, as a way to produce base energy. The, we talked about it at the beginning, we touched on it. There is another bill doing a similar thing, this one for the small capacity right. nuclear. Why is your idea better than that one? Because that bill focuses on micro and modular nuclear power that is so early in its development that it, it's at least six or seven years away from rolling out, and maybe 10. And so it doesn't solve the, the problem we have in these 10 years. It's a great idea, but what are we gonna, we're gonna have two experimental ones maybe within the next five years. I, I wanna shift to a different bill you have now. It's, a, it's one that's just been passed through this week along with what feels like 10,000 other bills right. going through committee. But uh, you have a bill that would regulate cryptocurrency Correct. here in the state. It's, it's a very unregulated field. I, but I wonder, you're coming at it from the state perspective. Right. This is a currency now that's traded globally. What can Illinois do to regulate a, a cryptocurrency market? Well, the key thing is protecting our consumers. So any transaction that occurs in the digital currency world that occurs with an Illinois consumer is our purview to regulate. So as we discover those, we require whoever did that transaction or or sold that, or have a, has a, uh, uh, an exchange that affects an Illinois customer, we require them to register as a financial institution with Illinois. That's the first step. The only other state that's actually doing that now is New York. And the reason is we wanna know who they are. Some of these are fly-by-nights. Some of them are established, well-run companies. There's just a whole range. We just don't know who they are. We wanna capture them so we can look at them. The second step is, are they fit? We're gonna have a set of standards on, do you have the, cap the capacity? Do you have the capital? Do you have the ability to protect yourself from hacking? The kinds of things we would ask any financial company, but we're not asking these because they're not, not part of what we look at. So it, it builds from there. But the whole idea is to protect people. We, we just had a, a an alleged scam occurred among Hispanic community in our suburbs that affected 300,000 people that, or I'm not sure if that number is correct, but affected thousands of people for a substantial amount of money that got ripped off by a cryptocurrency sale that says, you know, banks won't deal with you. This is all in Spanish. So here's a way for you to build your wealth. We have the same thing happening in the black community, same thing happening all over the state. Of, of small companies coming into this, offering it electronically. And then when people want to get their money, they can't find them. <laughs> it's just remarkable. It, it, it's, opened the, it, it's opened the whole field for fraud. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and capture it. The, the thing that the established companies like about this, this is to capture the bad actors. So the established companies in, in this field don't all get a bad name. So I view it as good for them. So we'll see how their reaction is. All right, well, Representative Mark Walker, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much. We'll be right back.